safety nets. That's how we're rolling. No safety nets. <laughs> <laughs> but, but before we start, I just have to say, can you all appreciate this dope retwist and the <laughs> setup of this line? My, my, my stylist, man, she... She'd be doing things. I would tag her, but her schedule's already packed out. Um, <laughs> and I'm selfish that way, and I'm not sharing. I'm, I'm not. That's just, I'm let you know what it is. Plus, y'all can't afford her because uh, I pay her in heavy dollars and Jamaican food. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, you drop off some oxtail, you know, that's just going to be game it. over. It is. It's game so, over. So, y'all can stop DMing, email, and trying to find. No, she is booked, okay? <laughs> she is booked all the time. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, welcome to This Week in Barbecue, the Barbecue Focus podcast that brings you both the good, the bad, and everything in between in the world of barbecue. I am your host, Mr. Rashid Phillips, and joining me is a familiar face and familiar voice, Mr. Lee Garman. Hey, we're here. Um, not with us is Brian. He's playing hopscotch, double dutch, whichever one works better <laughs> on this. We're just kidding, Brian. We miss you. He's out there doing amazing Brian stuff. This man... He's booked up until the end he of the year. He stays busy. Yeah. He, he stays, stays productive. Busy. He's on that calendar. He's popping up. He's fighting near-death battles with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> with COVID, and he's, uh, he's, he's winning. So I love it. I love that. Um, I love the grind. It just reminds me. Because when we talk, when I talk with him, it always reminds me how long I, long ago I was in it and for how long I was doing things. Mm-hmm. I was just like, 2015, 2016 were some crazy times. I go back to them, like, I don't even know what version of me I had back then, because those were crazy hours. Uh, I mean, What do you think the most pop-ups you did in one calendar year is? Oh, God. I remember, like, during summer, I would, I would do uh, Friday nights at Jekyll. Mm-hmm. Even tied Saturday mornings, Friday nights at uh, Jekyll, and then pontoon on Sunday and Jekyll Sunday evening. So I would do five in a week in just three days. Yeah, five in three days. And like with catering drop offs, uh, I had. So for those of you who are listening, who are always trying to figure out how to get your clients, go back. I already talked about my my car dealership hustle. Uh, that's also on threads. If you're on threads, I uh, did a whole thread on it. You know, just search Rashid Phillips. It's one of my threads on there. But one of my other, uh, weekly hustles that people don't know about, I had the church circuit. Oh yeah. I would run the church circuit. Welcome to the South. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> South. Lunch. Welcome to the South. I'd run the church circuit and, uh, you know, I, I fed a many a Garmin mm-hmm. that way <laughs> during the week. I fed a many a Garmin during the week. Uh, shout out to Rowan and everybody. Seeing you guys go, it's crazy. Um, but I would do the church circuit during the week on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and sometimes Tuesdays, Thursdays, providing dinner for rehearsals. Mm-hmm. The bands and the choir and everyone had to rehearse. They're there. They want food. So that would be my staple money. I always knew no matter what. Yep. For the month, I was bringing in this amount, mm-hmm. so I would use my church money as my capital for my pop-up money. Uh. So I was never in the red. I was always in the black. I yeah. would always use the church money for the capital. If whatever cost exceeded that, hey, that's just what it's going to be. And uh, <laughs> that was a hustle, man. That was a good hustle back then, and it's just midweek deliveries. The downside of it is always during traffic, so... You got to factor that in, but you're just guaranteed two large catering orders every week to get yourself enough capital to go into the weekend to do your pop-ups. That way your pop-ups are all profit Yeah, and you do it all over again. (laughs) I I think back, I'm like, man, I really have just been flipping the same $400 (laughs) and all these years. The same 472 has been flipped into... Not a bad place. A few things. A few things. A few, few, few things right now. Some cameras, some this. But, uh, gosh, that was that was a, per, I think, what was it? Um, Pontoon's either second or third, and I think it was their second anniversary. We weren't expecting it to be so crazy. It was a Saturday. And I was rolling stuff for um, the farmer's market at Eventide for Sunday. Everyone and their mom showed up for the anniversary, the second anniversary of Pontoon. And we just flew through food so quick. 
because I'd spoken with the guys, talked with Sean and everyone, and we're like, yeah. all right, we'll go with this. Yeah, they didn't expect as many people to show up, <laughs> and they were going through where they're going like, oh, what do we do? So, and this is why we're always so close to my they'll always have me back no matter what. I left, left the guys there to continue serving. I left, got the Eventide um, um, farmer's market food, brought that to continue serving throughout the rest of the night at Pontoon because it was just such a crazy demand. Finished that event, went to the comm, clean and started all over again for the farmer's market. So this is why I tell people, like, if you want this, you won't make excuses. You'll find solutions. Yeah, be ready. Yeah. Uh, good old days. I don't know what I was on back then. I think I was on, like, drive initiative and a bump of cocaine. Had to be because there's no <laughs> way you can do these things. There's no way, man. It's just, I love it. I love it. I miss so it. would you say, I don't know, like, safe range? You're probably in the, like, you're running five a weekend. Minimum. Yeah. I mean, five, a like week, five a weekend minimum on a, on a four four uh, four weeks. It's at least twenty pop ups a month over the course of just the summer. It's at least sixty to eighty. Yeah, I was gonna say. So, like, there was a time and point where, I mean, maybe you were hitting a hundred in a season. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, the what would get it too is so uh, when I started, there wasn't a lot of barbecue. Yeah, at all. So, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was myself and two, maybe three other guys. Maybe, like, there was Illegal Foods. There was this cat named Carne. And one other guy, I, he didn't really do barbecue. did more, like, uh, talks but he did, like, um, every once in a while he'll do, like, video and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's only three of us really working a circuit. And way back 2015, 2016, there wasn't a lot of pop-ups like yeah, that. yeah. And so breweries were still having like these event nights. So yeah. the pop-ups were my well, and weekend like gig. Food trucks too yeah. were mm-hmm. like more of a thing back then too. Yeah, you like get it a wasn't lot like more food trucks. I feel like pop-ups were m- way more like you'd see them up north, maybe in like New York and stuff mm-hmm. like that, or mm-hmm. on the West Coast where they have like the restaurants Coast. where they're like, like there are restaurants that are just literally like it's a different pop-up every like every couple night. days. Yeah, we've been to some. Yeah, and there's some uh, yeah out on the out on the West Coast where. They have brews and they just don't offer food. So mm-hmm. they'll have a guy on a cart with all of his stuff out there slinging like they work a partnership and a deal. Yep. Um, but back then I counted the pop-ups as the weekends, but I was still doing stuff during the week. Like Eventide used to have trivia night. Mm. And this is before they built up that whole yeah. area with the belt line and everything before costs got crazy. Cause I wanted the building. <laughs> I was trying to buy the building beside them. Oh and yeah. Literally before the paperwork got done, uh, they announced they were going to build this, the, the belt line and that property went way high. through the roof. I'm sure. And this is before, uh, um, Ben and all those other places in the back were built that look like they've been there now. It's like, no, no, no. Been there long enough to where you just would not want to go past <laughs> <laughs> that line over there. All right. Let me, those who know, no, there's, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it just worked out to where it just never happened for me to get that full, full physical, locale but i'd say some other things have worked out yeah yeah no complaints i'm not i'm not not complaining but i i dig seeing the terrain but pop-ups were the weekend even todd would do like their trivia nights which was huge Mm -hmm. and they needed food and the trivia night is really what uh i beta tested um uh the pitmaster potato at even tide trivia night that's that's where i beta tested and really worked out the kinks and worked out what worked because i was doing it with chicken breast and stuff first and i finalized it with that um so you do like a trivia night during the week there and then you have places like monday night that would have their events too so you could get oh, a yeah. quick rush of stuff like you know get a little bit of extra during the week and then get your heavy loads on the weekends yeah um but you had to be willing to work you had to fight that traffic <laughs> Get in, get oh, set, geez. blow it all down. It was out. Let's say Atlanta traffic. Yeah, but so many times I remember throwing throwing the truck in the, in a reverse, getting their their driveway, unload and get my car. Set, set, set. All right, I'm setting up with the DJs, and I, you're just in the city. Everyone knows you. they're looking for your truck. They're looking mm-hmm. for you there. All everyone was so close. The other uh, uh, barbecue pop up guys helping each other out. Yeah, oh, I miss it. 
Ah, oh, <laughs> reminisce about the good old days. <laughs> Back in my day, you had to have X, Y, and Z. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, this hit a little bit of news, and we'll go back down some some memory lane. Um, Facebook influencer scammers. So that is a thing. If you guys have been listening, you might recall. Gosh, I think it was last year actually. Mm-hmm. We, you know, Mister Carter. Um, B of Brian Furman's barbecue and so many others that got hit with someone scamming and taking over their account. Uh, you got, I think we even mentioned go follow this new account for them because they had to create a new account. Yep. B was out of his account for, Just for a while. Yeah. 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 A real long while. And it's happened again. So, uh, grill girl, uh, grill girl, Robin, Robin Lenders put out a reel and we'll link it in the show notes warning everyone that the scammers are scamming and they're getting much better at it. They basically went to her with an opportunity. They knocked. We get it all the time. Yeah. Majority of the time, a lot of these uh, brands will hit you up in your DM and they'll also follow up with an email letting you know, hey, I'm with so-and-so agency. We represent this brand. We want to talk a partnership. Partnership. That's not weird. Yeah. That's normal. All seems pretty normal so yeah. far. And her whole experience, you know, that we're aligning it with this uh, celebrity and this product, and they want to have a food element, and we look, found you. Also, very normal. Sounds like one that we got the other day. This is where things got a little squirrely, which is normal, but usually for the larger brands. Sometimes they like to do what's called a white listing or takeover, where you go through a third-party website, and you grant access to your social media for that brand. It's something I don't do. I personally don't do it. And for those of you who are like, oh, I've, I've never seen it. What is he talking about? 99% chance you've seen it. You just you don't know. You've seen it. Yeah. Uh, it, it may be like when you see a Kevin Hart commercial for like Chase Bank in your feed and you tap it and it takes you to Chase. Yep. This is Instagram page and not Kevin Hart's page. That's a, a white listing page, a white listing post. They presented her with that. And it turned out to be a hack where they just took all of her information and access. Now imagine when you have, you know, a couple of hundred um, or tens of thousands of social media followers and then your Facebook is like 200,000 deep. That's a lot of mm. data. It's a lot of quick marketing you do real quick to send people a bad link to have them link, yep. click and get access to. So this happened to her. She put out a warning. We shared it on a page. We'll put it out again. But guys... Be mindful. Even when we get uh, someone to reach us, we I never click any link that's sent on social. Whatever their name, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We always check their name against you know see the registry, see if there's a site, see if there's a page. Go on LinkedIn. Does this happen? Do you have a profile? No. Do you have a profile? But there's no picture, no information. No, we're good. Yeah, because there's a lot of scammers out there, so. Um, listen to the reel. We'll have it up there. Just be mindful because yeah. they want to get your, there's a lot of information in there. Oh yeah. Be careful. Um, next up, shout out to Stan, the man and the whole crew of Operation Barbecue Relief. You know, um, our thoughts go out to everyone in Hawaii who were affected by the fires. It seems horrible. And I hate that people are trying to take advantage of it and just run out there to mass grab land. Like, they said they have developers coming out offering money. I'm like, that's horrible, man. Offer help. Stop trying to make a buck. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't that, know that. Oh, yeah. It's been on the news reports where in Lanai, developers have touched down immediately trying to buy the land from people. Like, hey, we know you're, this is going to cost so much to rebuild. Just let me have Just it. Just let us have it for man. you. Man. That mass land grab. It's horrible. And it's sad because it goes along the line of what we were talking about earlier. There's just some shitty people. Yeah. Out there, and I might address. I might find a creative way to address that at the end, but um, that's why when you have good people like Stan and the crew of Operation Barbecue Relief, that if you guys aren't already, please go support them. They touched down and they provided over thirty thousand meals. That's a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot of meals for everyone who was displaced. And yep. these guys, they just do it. They're like no questions asked. They find a way. They just how did there. they get all their stuff there? So. Or did they? Did they just use what was they on use, the Sometimes they use what's on the island. Sometimes they're able to get their stuff there. Yeah. Um, perfect example right now, you know, if I'm ever going to be compared to someone, I'd always, 
I'm always flattered when it's this gentleman, Mr. Rashad Jones, Stan messaged me instead of Rashad because there's <laughs> about to be a hurricane in Florida, which oh, has yeah. canceled my yep. my whole uh, <laughs> shoot that I'm supposed to do there. Um, but he's you know reaching out like, hey, who's got extra smokers? We're going to wheel our stuff down. We're going to caravan. But if anybody wants to come in and yep. uh, caravan and tag it for, for feeding and food, we're there to make it happen. Oddly enough, I just might still go because Penny's down there. So I'm like, well, I already have my rig there. Um, <laughs> so I can at least, you know, throw me some meat and some splits. We'll cook on it. Um, but shout out to Stan and them for just always answering the call and knocking it out and, and providing for those who are in need. They don't do it for praise. They don't do it for thanks. They just do it because it's necessary. Help your fellow man yeah. in, the, in the best form. Uh, <laughs> I want to say we'll do two things, but I want to save the other one because I think that's a good conversation. We may have to get Hetty Murphy in here for two. <laughs> <laughs> um, one big thing, uh, shout out and many thanks to my sis, Susie. I appreciate this. Got this guy right here. Freeze frame for the, for the, for the thumbnail. <laughs> but Susie has dropped a new wing night kit. It's uh, the Hey Grill Hay. If you aren't familiar with Susie and you're in barbecue, you probably are. She's got so many recipes out there that don't even have her name on it. There's a strong chance you've cooked something that Susie's made, like she's written a recipe for. But she's got this dope wing kit um, with her sauce, the rubs, and the batter. And these are out now. You can get them on her site. And they're in stores, too. They're in certain stores all across, so... Once again, Susie, I appreciate it. This isn't a paid thing. She just sent sent me some, and maybe I can get her to send us some to to do giveaways. But uh, I love a good smoked fried wing. It's what we talk about every time we go to Rodney's. I'm like, just oh, get, yeah. get the wings. Just get the wings. Get the wings. Like, yeah, everything's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the wings. Yeah, so, but if you can get some smoked wings. Yeah. Get some it. smoked wings. Get some smoked wings. Like, it's not. Let's see if I can pop this guy open here so you guys can see everything that's in it. Because it's really, really cool. And she put a lot of work into it, so I, I get I get down on packaging. I get down on packaging. All righty. So we've got our uh, Hey Girl Hey Sweet Heat Sauce. Nice little wing sauce here. Digging it. Then we've got our rub, the Sweet Barbecue Rub. Ooh, I'm loving it. See some, uh, she's starting to see what's in here. You know, when you mm-hmm. try enough, you can do that little shake. Like, oh, guys. Okay, <laughs> I see. I pick up what you're putting down, and the wing batter, deliciously formulated for long-lasting crunch. Good for grills by Susie. But look, Ooh. Susie killing the game. Now here's what got me. Here's what got me. Right, it's the little things. It's the little things because, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got your what you'd expect your recipe card. But when was the last time you bought some rubs with wet naps? <laughs> branded wet naps branded wet naps yeah. I'm like you know what because you got to fight for these when you go out to get wings yeah. they want to be stingy with it no you've got it all in here so definitely we'll have that in the show notes go get you some once again it's not a paid thing I'm not getting a kickback I'm not getting anything I am going to get a delicious set of wings out of it though when I finish making this at home so go check it out perfect timing for tailgate season yeah football is here like it's time to it's time to fire it up time to go um, I guess we should do the other giveaway thing too, yeah? You know, I mean, yeah, if not? you want to. For funsies. Yeah. So yeah. Um, if you guys have been following for any amount of time, uh, you might have heard we first broke the story months ago. Um, I think we were still in our old building then when we first broke it about uh, Seth and Anthony oh, doing yeah. their kids yeah, yeah. barbecue show. Yes, that was the old location. Yeah, and... When we reported on it, <laughs> I had no inclination whatsoever that I'd be a part of the show. Well, that wasn't the goal. I was just making news. You know, that's what we do here. And now, uh, if you guys watch, you'll see this uh, awkward looking Jamaican oak tree on your screen sometime, a couple times in September. And throughout about had the pleasure of working with those gentlemen as they go on this venture. And it's just been a heck of a ride. Amazing guys. Learn so much. Thankful for the opportunity and everything that has come with. So they sent me a nice little 
care package, and you might see a couple of others of gone. little as you. <laughs> yeah, no, right. You might see some some other cats uh, have them. You know, tag them. You know, I think they're trying to get on, do their thing. Hey, I don't knock anyone's hustle, man. If that's yeah. how you got to eat, just just make sure you got your wet naps. <laughs> I prefer to create my own, but this big, yeah. <laughs> this is their kings of barbecue. <laughs> Uh, set that they they sent me, and I'm going to get some to give away to you guys, you listeners. I'm trying to figure out what's going to be the best way. So this right here, yeah, throw that thing open. There we go. We got a nice little card, and we've got their rubs. So they've got three rubs, the MVP, right? It's got a little bit of heat on there. The Midnight Smoke, very, very good. My personal favorite, the one that I've been pushing to everybody, Lemon Stepper. Got, ooh. So you guys will see me and the Lemon Stepper get down on TV. It's fun. I might post a little behind-the-scenes clip. (laughs) But this is really good. It is one of the best lemon pepper rubs I've had. That doesn't have that acidic chemical taste, mm-hmm. and it's not just pumped a uh, pumped a celery salt. Mm-hmm. It's actually really balanced. Um, got a nice like Kings of Barbecue apron, and in that box is a spatula. But I digress. Just drop that down there. So it's a very flavor packed episode. <laughs> There's a lot of like rough <laughs> lots stuff of boxes, <laughs> lot 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 of boxes. So we got this. And then we got the barbecue unboxed. Bar- exactly. <laughs> there it is. That's the title of this episode, barbecue unboxed. So we've got Susie and we've got Seth and Anthony. It's got flavor. We got flavor. Heck yeah. Might have it. Stay tuned. We'll probably do a live little recipe. If, uh, I may re- redo the cook that I did on the show and have us film it. We'll put that out so everyone can make it for themselves. So uh, there we go. Said Ant, I appreciate that. The whole crew over there. I can't name names because sadly there are people that will just go like yeah bomb them trying to get free stuff or be on the show or this and i'm like guys just go do your own stuff it'll come do the work trust me but that's a long talk for a whole other episode and podcast actually (laughs) (laughs) now this question i have to ask and we would love your guys's opinion on it so when you get a shot drop a comment shoot us an email over at uh, This Week in Barbecue at Gmail. We'd love to know what you think. Or hit us up on the socials at This Week in Barbecue across the board. There's a story that broke of a restaurant called Fire, F-Y-R-E. No relation to Firefest, which have you heard they're doing again? There is no way they're yeah. letting that guy come back. They're doing it again. No. I promise. It's you. not. Is it the same it's guy? It's the same guy. Hell. I don't know. I don't know. But they're doing it again. I was like. There's no way. <laughs> it's like this has to be. I'm getting Rick rolled here. There's but, no way. Yeah, his insurance policy has to be through the roof. Has to be. He's still paying people back. Yeah. So I'm like, how? Who's who's backing yeah, this? Yeah, somebody's paying for that, and it's not him. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the world is a crazy place. It brother is a crazy it place. Is. Mm. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh but my gosh. The, once again, this ha- this story has no relation to that. Aside from the name. literally, if that actually happens, that's the that's the epitome of like fool me once. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and if it happens again, I'm gonna laugh at everybody. Yeah, you got. You, it's like you, you deserve it. There's like, a whole documentary. You, you knew it was a phenomenon. You knew what would happen. <laughs> they literally showed you the stuff. I said, like, nah. I know you said the pan is hot. I'm still touching anyway. <laughs> okay, this is touching the pan again after you burned yourself. Yeah, that's what this is. Like, what are you what are you doing? But this story has me thinking. Uh, a chef, John Mountain, first off, bomb ass name. Like, that's dope. Yeah. Like, it's like built in branding. Yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. Shout out to your folks. Um, he had a story, and he's up to here with vegans. So, John banned vegans from his restaurant. So, he had an, uh, a set of vegans come in and berate him for saying, How dare he charge like $38 for a plate of vegetables? Mind you, it's a, it's a it's a meat dominant place. It's all open fired food. Yeah. It's, it's meat heavy. Yeah, and his vegan option is thirty eight bucks, right? And they went on this tirade trying to like give him negative reviews on his side. He's like, I'm done. It's like I'm done. 
Y'all are banned. Vegans don't come to my spot. Don't come here and eat. So if you're a vegan and you want food, don't come here. This isn't for you. This is the, I got I got nothing on the menu for you. So, I mean, I got to ask you, what are around. your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Like if they're gonna come through next, like it's not like he's hiding what he's doing. Yeah, it's not like he said, oh well, if uh, if you want to, I'll make you a vegan meal. Yeah, it's like well then just don't go to that place. It's like I personally, as somebody who loves a good piece of red meat. Mm-hmm. I'm not showing up to a vegan place and getting mad that they don't have red meat. Yeah. That, I mean, I, it feels pretty simple to it me. It seems simple, but they got they are, they are the vegans are are marching in their <laughs> faux leather and and, and, <laughs> and animal friendly attire. I'm just like And if you're a vegan listening to this, I doubt it cuz well, obviously the next in the title, I doubt there's any of you left. Um I don't see where you, where do you get off because I as a meat eater like you said I cannot go to a vegan spot and be like let me get a steak yeah and then be upset when you don't have when it. they go well that's not what we do you go oh I'm appalled how dare you and if they do they charge like oh it's two hundred bucks yeah like what no like you know, I'm I I and it's so weird because it, and it's crazy those who craft menus I've had. I've had so many catering inquiries like, Oh, do you do vegan barbecue? No. Why don't you offer vegan catering and vegan options? Because I'm in barbecue. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, barbecue doesn't always have to be meat. My barbecue does. Yeah, let's say the barbecue that I do. Is, the barbecue that I do. This is, is how I choose to cook. Yeah. And if you don't like it, move on. Yeah. Not a rude way. Not just, a rude way. It's just not that's what I do. That's not my get down. I know there are some amazing vegan specialists for barbecue other i'm sure they're crushing it that is not my wheelhouse because you know what it means for me to do vegan i have to get a whole different rig i can't cook your rig i can't cook your vegan food on my rig yeah you gotta have meat juices everywhere no matter how i clean after i'd have to power wash steam spray scrub all from scratch might as well be new Mm -hmm. to just have it on there just like i couldn't do (laughs) halal food yeah on my rig couldn't so like what's 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 the problem here if you're a vegan, why are you going with your friends to a meat house? <laughs> First off, you need to check your friends. You need better friends. Go go out to do that stuff with your vegan friends. It's not here. But when I saw that story, I applauded him on the inside and out because I was like, you know what? I'm glad. Like, stop, stop breaking us. Stop making us, trying to make us feel bad because we make a living off of meat. Like, hey, it is what it is. Well, and I also think that there's like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with him being like, hey, okay, guys, like, I'm, I'm just going to put it out here. If you're vegan, my, I, I'm not, this is not yeah, it. This isn't, a, this isn't, this isn't going to be the route for you. Yeah. No. Because also like reviews like that, like yeah. at a glance, depending, you know, whether it's on Google or Yelp or, mm-hmm. or you know, mm-hmm. whatever people are looking through at a glance, if that stuff like starts dinging his rating. That's hurting his livelihood off of something that he's not even offering. Yeah. Like, that's just kind of wild. Like, you might potentially be messing with somebody's livelihood over something that they're not actively even trying to do. Yeah. It's the... This episode is just going to be titled, The World is a Crazy Place. (laughs) 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 The world is a crazy place, man. It, it, It really is, and... I just saw that. I was like, and they're really up in arms about it. They're really hurt, truly and genuinely hurt that they do not have that option. Like, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Nothing we can do. It's again, it's like, why did you show up there? I, now, I have had people during pop-ups and events ask if I have, like, oh, I don't eat pork. Does this, can you make this without pork? Or um, I don't. Do you red meat? Do you have what? What? What are your meat options, or you know things like that? That I understand. I, I eat so I get, but I, they're still wanting meat. They're not coming to a barbecue joint or a barbecue spot or a barbecue focused event. You know, looking for salads and stuff. Like that's not that's not what you're going to get here. Yeah. Um, so those type of options, yeah. But to just come in and expecting a complete vegan. Uh, first and focus menu. That's that's just not our thing. Well, let's say you even take like the the vegan part out of it. That's like going to a steakhouse and getting upset that they don't have really good chicken. It's like it's just yeah. not what I do. <laughs> like, like I'm going when you go to Olive Garden, 
you're not expecting a Wagyu steak. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. not. Like, you know, you, when you pull up a Panda Express, you're not like, yo. Not let expecting me get a, a great piece of sushi. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I'm over a Panda. Like, yo, let me get a 12-piece bucket, you know, mashed potatoes <laughs> and biscuits. Like, it's not. It's common sense, people. Sir, you showed up to the wrong place. Yeah. Like, hey, McDonald's, let me get that RB sandwich. What? <laughs> What are you doing here? Could I get a beef and cheddar? I do have to say that we didn't know until we actually uh, got it. But I, where were we? We were shooting is when we got attacked by the feathered felons. When we went to Wendy's and they have that bucket oh, of nuggets. Yeah. We didn't know. For like, what was it? 10 bucks? 10 bucks. 15 bucks. It was wild. I was 10 like, bucks for a bucket of nuggets. I don't even think we could go to Walmart and buy a, no. like, a bag of 50 nuggets for what we paid for a bucket of like. Yeah. It was outrageous. I thought it was a joke. And when I asked. When they let you order it, I was like, no. I was like, because I, I was like, that can't be, that can't be real. Like, let me get the bucket. They're like, okay. Okay. It's like, and it was just like, imagine a KFC bucket full of nuggets. Yeah. yeah 50 nuggets for With 10 one bucks. sauce packet. No, I'm joking. They gave, you plenty. <laughs> <laughs> they gave you plenty of sauce packets. But it's like, wow, this is a good deal. This is a good deal. Um. But yeah, let's round it off with two questions, and then we'll 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 kick it back. Um, one asked, uh, CK asked, what formula should you use to calculate sales cost? I see a lot of different numbers out there. That's a good question, man. Um, you can't charge X, Y, and Z because the other person is charging it. Because you'll never that that's not how it works. You have to go by your cost. The typical rule is a uh, multiple of three, right? That way. Uh, one covers the cost of the the item, one covers your labor, then the one is the profit. Yeah. So that's your typical rule of three, but sometimes, you know, it doesn't always factor out like that. And it just depends on the audience. And when you're calculating, also know that you don't always have to make it um, affordable to others. Because that's not your problem. Whether they can afford you or not, it's not your problem. I can't roll over to a uh, Ferrari dealership and be like, hey, you asking three hundred? I got two. Like it's three. They're not, they're that's not, the price. That's the price. Like they don't have to bend to me, so you don't have to try to lower everything to make it fit their budget. Then like, yeah, I'm not for you, and you don't have to say yes to every deal. And the reason why I'm mentioning this, we got an email the other day asking like, oh, um, I want you to cater for ten people. I was like, what? Because I got. I think you need to look up the definition, like what catering, catering is. Yeah. I think you guys just need two pizzas from Little Caesars or something. <laughs> uh, because what I would have to charge you to make it worth my while, oh, yeah. there's no way. Because well, yeah, it's like, here's a minimum that I work off of. Yeah. If you can afford that, sure, yeah, I'll show I, up. I tell them our, our minimums have increased because everything else has increased. So, you know, what used to be 30 is now our minimum is 40. Because if even at even people are like, oh, well, you know, you charge 30 or 40 dollars a head. Well, if you charge 40 dollars a head, made 400 bucks, right? Yep. Let's do some barbecue math. 400 dollars. They want brisket and pulled pork. Let's say you find a brisket for under 100 bucks these days, 75 bucks. Yep. Then you found a uh, pulled pork, uh, a pork butt. And that's 25 bucks. All right. So you're 100 dollars in and just the meat. Yep. Not your rubs, not your time. Not your travel, not your papers. And remember, that's just meat. You haven't done sides or anything else. So that 100 flips to two real quick as you got sides, your paper products. Then you put your labor in. I'm not busting my hump to make $100. That's ridiculous. No, you're basically working for free. Yeah, it's like it, I, I'll make more money telling you no than I will telling you yes. Yeah. You can go that way. But I uh, hope that helped, brother. Um, what else do we have here? What was that? I like cooking. Hmm. That's a long, that, that one we got to say, because that's a long <laughs> question. That was, It's a good question, but it's a long question. And someone asked, how much food do you know how to make for your first pop-up? That's a good one. That's a good one. When you're doing your first pop-up, I would say try to aim for 50 servings. That's it's your first time. If you end up with a bunch left, you're not hurt. If you sell out, great. You get to gauge it. But try to go for 50 servings of all your food. I think that's a nice staple, like real solid spot to be in. And, 
if if you if it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen, cool. Make sure you feed the staff. What you should be feeding the staff anyway. If you got good relations, I'm always take care of the staff. But it I helps. Think, yeah, it, it does. It goes it a long does. way. It really is because they're going to be like, oh, because someone last, oh, what's up? There's like, no, their stuff is really good. I've had it. Go get this. Yeah. Um, but I would start at trying to feed 50, 50 servings. 50 servings doesn't always mean 50 people. Mm-hmm. It can just be 50 servings of your food. And that number allows you to uh, scale up or scale down. And it's just always been like a good rule of thumb for me when I'm doing my events. What would you suggest for a potential first uh, pop-up location? Mm. Wow. You know, like looking back on it, because obviously you've been to a few locations. Yeah, yeah. If you could tell somebody like, hey, you want to give it a go, try and talk to a location, you know, like talk to a dealership or talk to a brewery or... Uh, post up on the, you know, the corner of the road or hit a football game up yeah. or, you know, like, you know, what would you suggest? I've done all of those, but post up on the road. I was never the gas station guy. Uh, not knocking anyone who is. I've seen a lot of gas station cats, but I was never <laughs> the gas station guy. I started in vineyards mm-hmm. and um, uh, school programs and breweries. So I would say it just depends on what you have access to. If you can start, and I started with vineyards so that I could get access to the affluent money crowd for the holidays. Because I started in uh, October when I did my first real one. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. I can get there. And, you know, holidays are right around the corner. We got turkeys. Yep. Um, but if I were to start up now doing something, the way that breweries are just taking off, I'd start there, but I'd go about it differently. I wouldn't just like, Hey, I want to pop up. No. And, and I think this is where so many people mess up. They just go in somewhere trying to take and they've never added, they've never brought value. Mm. And even now, like with some of the projects that I'm on, people try to become a part of it and just try to take, I'm not trying to, uh, I told you, uh, we just got a phone with someone and I told him like, I, I don't want to be there just to be there. Um, there's a reason I haven't been on television for three, four years. Like, I don't want to just, I'm not trying to just be there. I want to add value. Right. So, um, if you're not adding value, what's the point? So go to the brewery first, go there. If you're wanting to be there on a Saturday, go check out what a Saturday looks like. Don't just cold call them. They say yes. And you're like, Oh man, Saturday sucks. And then you hate the brewery. You're like, well, have you ever been here before? Have you ever checked it out? Go a couple of times, go during the week when they're having an event so people can see your face, buy a drink or two. And if you don't drink, buy someone else a drink and leave a nice tip. Go on a Saturday, go on a Friday, see what the crowd is like. I'm like, okay, cool. Go when another vendor is there to see how people treat that vendor. Is this crowd someone who that, that welcomes that type of thing? Like there's a lot of things you can do that just cost you a tank of gas and 20 bucks to get so much information. Like, hey, I went on a Sunday. They're not really a Sunday crowd, but Friday nights, they hit. Okay. Friday says, I know I can do something right there. Do it that way. Um, But if I were starting over, I would have my first location be a brewery after I've been to like two or three to see. And I would try to go to two or three that are in the same area Mm -hmm. so that I can get an idea as well. I'm like, okay. All right. And talk to the owners. Talk to the brewmaster. Right, yeah. just be like go up to one of the bars and say, hey, "Is your brewmaster here?" And like, you might be wondering why. Talk to the brewmaster and be like, "Hey, do you guys brew for anyone else, or do mm. other breweries brew for you?" And nine times out of ten, it's one of the two. Oh yeah. And then you're like, "All right, cool. What's your name? Get their card. Head over to that brewery. Yeah, I spoke to so and so over at this. They say you brew this for them." It's like, yeah, 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 we do. It's like, uh, you mind if I try? Yeah, it's like, cool. I only asked because I'm trying to set up a pop-up there and I wanted to try what you guys make here and see if I can't make like a specific dish that would pair perfectly with this beer. Well, especially with some of the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Some of the, just the smaller breweries, they're yeah. always got stuff in rotation. Yeah. So it's like, especially if you build up a relationship with them, you can say, hey, what are you making in like, say, six weeks? Yeah. What are you going to have? What do you, like, what are you making seasonally that we might be mm-hmm. able to play mm-hmm. off of? And piggybacking on that point all of those breweries know what they're brewing oh yeah months if not the whole year is yeah. already out yeah so i know my beer is always out in the fall yeah so i can always make dishes i go with it yep um tds is always out in the fall and stuff like that and that little network of 
going, communicating, becoming familiar, showing genuine interest, then taking that interest to the next location. I'm like, cool, let me craft something for this. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, because if you're just hot and spicy and it's a bunch of IPAs, like, yeah, probably not going to, might have to tweak <laughs> my menu a little bit, you know? So yeah, <laughs> yeah. that that's that's that recon, that's that stuff. That, I hope, helps, but, you know, man, I shouldn't. Yeah, so to sum it up, hit a brewery Mm -hmm. and do some market research uh, with, you know, said brewery. Yeah, worth it. Worth it, worth it, worth it. That's all we got, man. That's it. That's that's, that's, that's been the pod. For those of you listening, please like, share, follow, tell a friend or tell two friends, you know. Oh, a little bit of housekeeping. Grill and Chill Fest VIP tickets. I was about tickets. to say, we have not mentioned I know, it. We I know. cannot end the podcast. We can't. We can't. I'm lying. Don't don't pause yet. Come back. Come back. Come back in the room. Come back in the room. Uh, don't put on Netflix yet. Um, <laughs> Grill and Chill VIP tickets have sold out again. <laughs> um, again, again. Again, again. And for real this time. For real. We definitely if can't. If you or Kevin decide to open it up again, I if can't. I hear that, I'm not. we're done. We can't. We can't because I already put we don't the have food. enough food. I, yeah, yeah. I already put the food order in. Yeah. I already put the food order in. Uh, I mean, someone's not eating. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna start looking at people. And go well. Who's not gonna yeah, eat? We can t- we can tell who <laughs> got their ticket first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, but um, Grill and Chill Fest VIP is sold out. There's some gel on admission left. We've got some amazing surprises for those who did get VIP. So I'm sorry to rub it in. But don't message me. You know, we say like, oh, I was just about to buy. Like, bro, it's been up since June. I don't. I don't know what you want me to do. It's nothing I can do for you. Yep. You know, it's like, this is how it works. But we got Gen Ad. It's still going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. It's going to be right there on the lakeside over by the harbor. Many thanks to everyone who's supported. And this is going to be such a great cause. You know, when we started this, we we're saying we're going to use the funds to help the barbecue community. Mm-hmm. And that hasn't changed. You know, why you, you don't want to help one, you want to help many. That's what barbecue is about. So we're actually... Uh, we've partnered up with the Boys and Girls Club, uh, their Dallas location, uh, Navarro. And I'm excited to say we're going to be putting together a barbecue program there. And I'm really, really stoked about it. The uh, Boys and Girls Club of uh, Navarro County, they're going to be there on site for you to talk with uh, the leadership there and get an idea of what happens and how they help. It's just going to be a fun time overall want to pour back into this craft and this community. I don't have to. I want to. I want to see it grow past me. So really looking forward to that. Um, So grab your ticket. Go to grillandchillfest.com. Snag a gen ad ticket. I promise you it's going to be full of surprises and delights. I said VIP is done. You know, I'll I'll be lucky if I get a plate. Um, (laughs) But we're going to have some fun stuff there. I mean, I also will say for like, Probably, I mean, almost three weeks now. You've been saying, "Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait." We're almost sold out. We're almost sold out. We're right there, and it was gone. Yeah, it was just a rush. We'll see. Those last few did kind of linger. Yeah, yeah. But then someone came through and took them all. Yeah, they got them all. And then when we put the others up, those went really fast. Like I put them up, and then it didn't even last a day. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Well, okay. People are listening. Um, so I'm really happy about that. And it's going to be worth it, man. You know, the VIPs. You guys know what you're getting. You get a signed copy of Pops's book. And you get some of our jerk links, so it's going to be a really good time. Plus some other little... I can't uh, wait for those jerk surpri- links. I know. <laughs> so it's going to, be a, going to be some extra surprises and delights in there as well. But uh, I'll let you, uh, we'll save it for the recap. We'll save it for the post yeah, recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we may put a live stream out there, but it's, it's fun. It's my first event. First one putting it on, start to finish. Looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Uh, other light housekeeping, Holy Smoke Fest coming up November 11th. Make sure to grab your tickets. The VIPs are gone. <laughs> Do Those we know fast. if we will officially be there yet or not? Still up in the air, maybe? We'll talk right after this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk right after this. And with that being said, that has been This Week in Barbecue. I am your host, Rashid Phillips. And joining me as always in the place of the bearded wonder when he's not here now doing amazing things is Mr. Lee Garman. It's been a great week, guys. As always, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell two friends, and be good to one another. Cheers.